Hey folks, welcome. Thanks for being here. Thanks for being the few, the bold, the many. Wait, you can't be the few and the many. I guess it depends on your perspective. But the many out there who are uh, willing to look past the garbage from the mainstream media outlets, the propaganda that's blown into your face, the logaria of lies that sprays out of your mainstream media on a daily basis. Thanks for looking past all of that and joining me here today. I'm Lee Camp, the most censored comedian in America. Uh, I've asked for people to put forward uh, uh, competitors for most censored comedian currently alive and working in America. Uh, and I, I haven't had people uh, come up with good answers because there may be some that have been slightly censored like Louis C.K., but at the same time, uh, he just won a Grammy, didn't he? So uh, he's still selling out fucking theaters. He's not, uh, I wouldn't call it really censored. Anyway, that's a side note. We got a lot of good topics today to, to, to cover uh, how uh, NATO's latest push to uh, grow war, to continue the war uh, in many ways could be thwarted by a very surprising country that you probably won't be expecting. Um, and uh, I, I got several other stories to cover as well. Uh, as per usual, I'll be doing the first 15 minutes on all my uh, live stream platforms. After that, it'll the rest will be at rumble.com slash Lee Camp. It's all free, though, at rumble.com slash Lee Camp. It's free. You can uh, uh, go watch there and enjoy all of it. So please check that out. I'll uh, say that again in, in 15 minutes or so. But anyway, oh, and we got to go live at Rockfin, of course. Uh, don't want to forget that. But thanks for thanks for joining me, and uh, I, I'm just gonna play this clip again. And I know everyone's already seen it, but uh, it's it's worth it's worth watching over and over again, just as a nice a nice comedic way to to begin your day, to begin the show. Why not watch it a couple more times? And defending his country. In contrast, Russian elections are rigged. Political opponents are imprisoned or otherwise eliminated from participating in the electoral process. The result is an absence of checks and balances in Russia yep. and the decision of one man to launch a wholly unjustified and brutal invasion of Iraq. I mean, of Ukraine. Oops. Iraq. Anyway. Uh, <laughs> 75. Uh, yeah, and then they. I love the Guardian. Then shows a dastardly images image of Putin, just to remind you who the real bad guy is. Uh, but for the for, if there's anyone out there who's still not familiar with that clip, that is George W. Bush last week admitting to a wholly unjustified and illegal invasion of Iraq, accidentally meant to say Ukraine. Uh, I've gone into it in a previous video, so I won't spend much time on it. But I didn't go into, and most people have not gone into, the first half of that statement because the second half is still fucking ridiculous, where he, he says, uh, uh, completely unjustified, wholly unjustified invasion of Iraq. I meant Ukraine. And then he goes, also Iraq. <laughs> Just killed a million people. <laughs> so funny. But most people have not uh, gone into the the first half of his statement, which is, Russia uh, has a completely illegitimate election system, uh, even if true. So does the United States, folks. How about that part? Most people are not discussing how insane George Bush's first half of that statement that is now everywhere is. He says Russia has a illegitimate election system. The United States absolutely does. Absolutely does. Uh, black box voting machines can never see the code, can never see whether you actually got what you voted for. Uh, the elections are bought out. The, the person who spends the most wins 80% in the Senate, 80% of the time in the Senate, 90% of the time in the House. And the two people who spend the most win 100% of the time, all of the time. Um, you, you got gerrymandering. You got uh, uh, other ways of rigging, such as uh, these the ballot requirements. Um, you've got, uh, uh, the, 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 fuck, I mean, against Bernie Sanders in the primaries, they came up with whole new ways of, of rigging and cheating him, uh, you know, closing polling places. Uh, they, they created some sort of app called the shadow app that was used in Iowa to count the votes that then went haywire and didn't, uh, no one could actually count any of the votes. So then Pete Buttigieg just walked out and announced he had won like Juan Guaido. Well, I guess I won. 
Uh, no, you fucking didn't. And then it came out that, of course, Pete Buttigieg, along with the Clinton machine, had something to do with this shadow app that was supposed to also be used in the Nevada primary. But because it was such a catastrophe intentionally in the Iowa primary, they didn't use it in the Nevada primary. And Bernie Sanders won that one. So they had intended to use this app to steal multiple states. Uh, anyway, I'm just getting into a few of the ways that our system is rigged. Haven't even really dug into the fact that we have two parties that are really just one party. Uh, one corporate fucking shill piece of shit party. That is it. That is all. And then George Bush uh, is his next statement after saying the, the election system is not legit. He then says uh, political opponents are arrested or stopped from running. And again, even if true in Russia, but also true in the United States. Um, for one thing, you have uh, uh, political opponents who've been assassinated over the years, such as uh, Martin Luther King or hell, the president, JFK. Uh, but you also have political opponents who have been arrested, such as uh, Reverend Pinckney in, uh, in Michigan. Um, and there's, there's other examples. Eugene Debs, if you want to go back a few years. Uh, Jill Stein. Many may not, uh, may not recall. Many may recall that Jill Stein, running for the Green Party, tried to attend the debate uh, between the Republican and the Democrat tried to attend the presidential debate, which she should be at, right, as a presidential contender running for a major, in a major party. Uh, she should be at that debate, presidential debate. She's a presidential candidate. She showed up. They arrested her and Sherry Honkala, her vice president's uh, candidate. They arrested her. They put them both in a, a, a fucking basement room, chained, handcuffed to a chair with a gar armed guard for the entirety of the debate. This is not something I made up. This is not debatable. You can Google it and find articles at Democracy Now! and other places. Um, and Jill Stein has been on my show and talked about it as well. But uh, so chained up, imprisoned, kidnapped during the entirety of the debate, the phone's taken from them. And actually, Jill Stein says at one point, she said, hey, I'm a five foot two, uh, you know, I don't know how old she is, but 60 year old, 70 year old woman. What is she, what is she 60, I guess, uh, at the time. Uh, I think you can undo the handcuffs. We won't leave the room. You're armed. Just let us, just unchain us from the chair. And they said no. So that's what happens if you run for president in a third party in America. Uh, George W. Bush talking about how tough it is in Russia to run against the oligarchs in Russia. Uh, pretty much the same here. We maybe don't do things as uh, in your face, but it's all the same shit. Uh, you cannot run in a third party. And if you do try, they will first make sure you don't get on the ballot. That's step one. <laughs> that's just that's just child's play. That's, it just make sure you don't get on the ballot. Then in some states, unfortunately, you still get on the ballot. And so then they have to do things like chain you to chairs in basements with armed guards. So that's your America. That's your land of the free. Hope everyone's having a good time. I'm going to drink some of my mystery juice here. Um... But yeah, so most people are not talking about the other half of George W. Bush, George W. Bush's statement. Uh, but let's move on to some news news. So most of you know, proxy war going on in Ukraine. Uh, I've covered it extensively. Uh, it's, yeah, I'm opposed to the Russian invasion. I'm also opposed to the United States uh, using Ukraine as a proxy, um, basically obliterating that country. We are funding and arming them and making sure they don't have peace talks, making sure that peace talks fail so that we can keep allowing this proxy war to go on so that Russia's in a quagmire, blah, blah, blah. You guys know that part. Um, a lot of what led to this, and I'll get to the news part of this in a second, the new news uh, in a second. A lot of what led to this is the NATO expansion. Uh, we, although Ukraine was not in NATO, we were having NATO training in, within Ukraine. We were sending missiles and, and other implements of war to Ukraine. Uh, we, we talked about Ukraine being in like a, a NATO joining path maybe over the years. A lot of people don't realize NATO is not a fun and friendly organization. It is a, an organization of war. It creates war. It obliterates countries like they did to Libya. Um, so it, this, is not a, this is not a peaceful organization. This is an organization meant for death and killing and war, uh, to defend U.S. hegemony, to defend uh, Amer the American empire along with our uh, European feudal states, if you will. And 
And NATO has been expanding over the years, right? It's got 17 nations, I believe, directly kind of surrounding uh, Russia and former Soviet states. And it's uh, 30 states in all in NATO. So Russia felt, felt very threatened by this. And they've said this is a red line, increasingly said it's a, a red line for these states to join NATO and for NATO to keep expanding. By the way, in the past, we promised Russia that we would that NATO would not expand. Of course, it has. Anyway, there is now talk, and and uh, I covered this with Eleanor Goldfield on the last live stream, so if you want more on, on this part, then uh, feel free to check that out. But there is now talk of Sweden and Finland joining NATO. They have resisted until now. Uh, there is very little in their government pushing back against that idea of them joining NATO. Military alliances like NATO uh, do a lot to further the push for, say, World War. Uh, world War I is an example where you had military alliances kind of spiraling out of control, and then you end up in a world war killing millions. Uh, it's fucking insane. And so NATO is uh, it, it, it's helping push us towards a nuclear Armageddon scenario. And... Uh, it has been great that, that Sweden and Finland have resisted uh, the, the, the urge, the push to, to be one of these NATO states until now, uh, even though it's not like they're just peacemongers. Uh, Sweden, I think, ships uh, some of the most weaponry around the world, military weaponry around the world in, uh, in any country. Uh, maybe they're second or third or something in terms of exporting military weaponry. It's all made by IKEA and you got to put it together with an Allen wrench and there's a, a directions on how to put together the warhead with a little frowny face if you do it wrong. A little happy guy if you get the Allen wrench correct. Anyway, just my luck. I know, don't, don't, don't fucking have me put together the warhead. I... I have fucking things, fins sticking off in odd directions. I'd be like, we'll just hammer this part in there. And they're like, there's no hammer in the direction. It, it says just an Allen wrench. I'm like, I, they want me to hammer. Some Listen, if they didn't want us to hammer, they would have said don't hammer. Uh, 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 yeah, don't have me put together your warheads. Anyway, for like you. So, uh, but there is a, a, a glimmer of hope that it might be impossible for Finland and Sweden to join NATO right now, which would be catastrophic. I mean, Russia would view it as even more threatening. We'd get even closer to nuclear war. We're already on the brink of nuclear war. The nuclear scientists have said that not only are we uh, something like uh, half a second to midnight, which is nuclear Armageddon, but they've also all said that they have shat their pants. They put out a joint statement, nuclear scientists, uh, who shat their pants. And I feel like we should take that seriously. So, but this is from Craig Murray, uh, former British diplomat. Uh, if you've heard his name before, it's probably in connection to Julian Assange. He is a, uh, a friend and uh, ally of Julian Assange's, as we all should be. I mean, can't all be friends with him, but we should all be allies. We should all be fighting for Julian Assange. Craig Murray has done it as much as anybody and has often been in court when Assange is in that giant Tic Tac jar uh, trying to trying to fight for his life and his freedom. And so Craig Murray, uh, former U D diplomat, and he was uh, the, the Brits successfully got him locked up for something like six months or a year, uh, basically for his speech, for things he said. Uh, th that's how fucked the system is. And I really think they went after him because of uh, Assange. But anyway. So I want to show you this article that Craig Murray has put out. Uh, he says NATO, uh, he talks about NATO expansion and Turkey. And he says, I am in Turkey because if there, oh, by the way, in a few minutes, we will be cutting off the, uh, cutting off the, live stream to all platforms except Rumble. So if you want to continue watching this and learn uh, about this story and others, then please go to rumble.com slash Lee Camp. It's free to watch over there. So Greg Murray says, I'm in Turkey because if there is to be movement in ending the war in Ukraine, it will happen here. President Erdogan, which by the way, just pause here, President Erdogan, not a good guy. Okay. Don't, don't don't misread that because uh, we're talking about NATO expansion, et cetera, that uh, it means Erdogan's a good guy. But, you know, sometimes 
you, the, the bad guys do something you like. Like that time Donald Trump tried to create peace with North Korea. Anyway, uh, President Erdogan's firm stance on potential veto of Swedish and Finnish NATO membership is framed in public only in relation to perceived support by those countries for Kurdish resistance groups. But of course, it goes much deeper. Erdogan understands that the spectacular advance by NATO eastward that Finnish enlargement in particular would represent is a slap in the face of Putin that will make a peace deal in Ukraine far more difficult. And if we just pause there for a second, you might think to yourself, why would Biden and, and Sweden and Finland and others and NATO want to make peace in Ukraine far more difficult? That sounds like a bad thing. Uh, maybe because they have a fucking proxy war and they like it and they want it. And they've been funding and arming Nazis in Ukraine to fight this war and they want it to keep going. And Boris Johnson actually went to Ukraine and met with Zelensky recently to tell him not to have peace talks, to tell him to end peace talks. Keep letting all your people die. Make sure this is as catastrophic as possible and goes on for years. And Zelensky was like, all right, man, love it. That's his accent. I bet many, many people don't know that, that uh, Zelensky sounds like this. It's kind of weird. I, I don't know why. It's a weird accent for Ukraine. But anyway. So... But yes, yeah, slap in the face and would make peace more difficult and NATO and the U.S. fine with that. No problem with that. Love it. Love it. Any such deal would have to be based upon Russia giving up some of the Ukrainian territory it holds today. Dramatic NATO expansion is the very opposite of an attempt to create the conditions for, uh, for that peace. In fact, that, uh, that NATO is so actively pursuing this expansion is sufficient Sorry, there's sufficient evidence that NATO is looking for a long proxy war to bleed Russia rather than trying to restore peace and stability to Europe. Ding, 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 ding. What your mainstream media won't tell you. NATO and the U.S. want this to go on as long as possible. They want as many Ukrainians to die as possible. They want to fight this and they want to fight Russia until the last Ukrainian. It's completely fucked. These are sociopaths. This is the definition of a sociopath. These ruling oligarchs don't give a shit about average people. You can see it in our health care. You can see it in our minimum wage. You can see it in our across our country in all kinds of aspects. So do you think, do you think they give a flying fuck about average Ukrainians that are stuck in the middle of this proxy war? No, not at all. Not at all. Same with the billionaires that funded Zelensky's run they don't give a shit about average Ukrainians either. So NATO and the rest, fine with this going on forever. As long as possible. That the European public are gripped by a wave of emotion. Hold on a second. That the European uh, public is gripped by a wave of emotion over Ukraine was amply demonstrated by the popular votes of tens of millions in the Eurovision Song Contest. Yes, Ukraine won Eurovision. I wonder why. I'm sure it was because they were the best musicians. Once the spasm dies down, opinion in Finland and Sweden may revert. It has been obvious for over a decade that Putin has an aim to reintegrate Russian populated areas of the former Soviet Union into the Russian Federation. That agenda is currently causing a ruinous war, but is no military threat to Finland and Sweden. So Craig Murray is stating that it's not like he supports uh, the Russian invasion. He supports peace. Turkey retains the prestige of, of chosen venue and perhaps broker for continuing diplomatic contact between Russia and Ukraine. Erdogan's robust stance on Finland and Sweden is necessary to maintain Russian trust. Turkey, of course, has its own lengthy and extremely complex historical and current relationship with Russia, which is much more important than Turkey's role as a key NATO member might suggest. It's also worth bearing in mind that Turkey is far more serious military power than Finland and Sweden combined. I mean, how fucked up a situation do you have to be in to find yourself rooting for Erdogan, rooting for this asshole in Turkey to stop the enlargement of NATO and to, and to actually create peace in this completely fucked situation. I mean, how screwed up does it have to be to end up here? It's tr truly incredible. All right, so 
I want to get to more of this article, but I also want to get to other news stories. But we are only doing that at rumble.com slash Lee Camp. So go over there, click subscribe, click uh, the, the alerts so you get the notifications. The reason I have to leave YouTube is because they literally aren't telling people about my videos. They uh, aren't showing my videos to people. So rumble.com slash Lee Camp. It is free, by the way, to uh, subscribe over there. But if you want to support my stuff, please support it at leecamp.net. Uh, and we'll get going again here in just two seconds. <laughs> 